So here it is, the C5 on Peretta. This project has been going on now for about two years and we've learned a lot about it. First we started off with uh, simple drawing sketches, what we want to do, where we want to go and then we didn't even have the car. Then we bought ourselves a 1 to 20 model, put some clay on top of it, you know, wanted to see what's going on here and uh, first lines that the customer wanted was that it would have a really, really sharp lines everywhere. So it's a, it's a sort of trendy thing nowadays, like a Lamborghini and all that stuff. But um, we started off with the sharp lines and then we, we got the car. We started to build on top of it, you know, putting some basic things right. Uh, we put 19-inch uh, wheels here. So we wanted to go wider. That's uh, one thing that was clear, wide body to give it more this Coca-Cola bottle shape or a woman's shape sort of. That of course resulted in that we have to redo the inner fenders uh, because the wide uh, wheels would not turn uh, and that of course resulted in many other changes so it, it's been a process of going around doing one thing seeing what it affects and we wanted to keep the car technically uh, right now uh, as close to the original as possible. Making it wider, yes, that's one thing that we decided to do, but um, not changing, for example, the windshield or, or any of this stuff up here. So the top of the car will be the same as Corvette. And the reason for that is uh, making new window glasses, uh, making new rubber moldings here, it's really, really difficult. And it will take just a lot of time, a lot of money, and it will have basically a very little effect. If I could do the top again, what I would do is actually make this go away, this part here. I would make the top narrower. This will actually add this wideness to it. The car is right now, from wheel to wheel, uh, two meters wide, which is pretty wide for a street car. But uh, the top here is too wide in the front it just blows it all away, it just ruins it. The height of this curve here and the height of this curve here, they are the key into the success. So it took us about two bodies, two different set of fenders to get there, to get these right. So this height here and the front fender height is, is all right. It's almost perfect, uh, but we still have to redo the rear part of this fender this has to flow a little bit higher. This is what we drew in Photoshop. Uh, and now we have been working inside the Photoshop to get more views of this car, to get details right. So when we actually start to do the body again now, but hopefully for the last time, then at least uh, we do it one time and, uh, and it will be done then. Uh, our aim here is that we start to build the body for the final time in the beginning of June. When we got the side view more or less right, we posted the photo into two forums. One was into the Corvette forum and the other forum was uh, Mad Mechanics forum. And uh, a guy from Greece actually, it's called Icaros there. He wrote to us, you know, that, hey guys, you in Estonia, you do some cool stuff there and I want to help, you know. I can help you with the Photoshop and, and everything. So, he offered us help volunteering, amazing, you know, and he has done really, really good renderings for us, which has helped a lot. And uh, we decided now what sort of front uh, headlamp we have. Uh, that, of course, resulted me cutting away all of this that used to be here because it didn't fit there. But now he has done great renderings for us from front and uh, of course this all will be redone now but um, thanks man and uh, I said it before in in our other shows but if there are people you know who, who like cars and, and like 
working on cars and making something special and, and customizing them and so forth. So they are all potentially my best friends, you know. And it doesn't really matter which country you are or what color you are or what religion you believe in. One of the things that we have to consider is, is legislation. And this is the reason that we have chosen this headlamp here, because it has to have uh, E letters on top of it. It has to be certified and verified and whatever that crap is. So it is actually from another car. It is from uh, Alfa Romeo uh, 159. And because it's like a three, threesome uh, headlamp, it has um, white to it. So, so actually, it makes our car a little bit wider. As I said before, we have been working on this project for about two years, so we have had a lot of time to think about things, you know? Like, for example, why do you build a new car body out of sheet metal? There is a reason for that. We have been restoring a, a glass fiber car that was built in the 70s uh, for about two and a half years in there. And actually to get everything right, the shapes, the lines and everything, the glass fiber, it, it plays ar around a lot. You put some uh, bondo on top of it and it will pull up. And then you actually sand it down and it will go down again. So one day, at one point you have a mountain, at the other point you have a, a hole. And one thing that is good about metal, it shines. Of course, it will be maybe best to do it uh, from uh, automotive clay, as the automotive companies do it. But it's so goddamn expensive. Then there is CNC and 3D and everything. We have tried 3D, getting the feeling what shape is the thing on a flat screen is, is really difficult. One good thing about the sheet metal is it shines, it glows. You can see how the light shines on this edge or how it actually makes everything come together or not. So you can make adjustments and you get it right. If it's like glass fiber or foam or something else, then you put some putty on it and then you sand it down and then you have to paint it really glossy paint on top of it and only then you will understand if the shape or the curves are right with the sheet metal you can see it right away and of course it's difficult to manufacture something like this in into mid-air but difficulty is something that actually teaches us a lot it's it's a challenge i've done some sheet metal work but not something like that big you know and one more good thing about sheet metal is that actually duplicating the other side, mirroring it, is uh, a lot easier than with a glass fiber or, or other stuff. So it will not stay metal. We will make the, uh, the body, then we will take glass fiber molds from it, all the fenders and everything, and then we will make it from carbon fiber so it will be really light and really strong and really modern. Then one philosophy that we have sort of like taken is that if there are vent holes or any sort of things like that, these must work. If there's a hole in here, it will work. This uh, is something to do with our racing heritage. We've been racing cars and formulas for about uh, 18 years now. So um, the aerodynamics on that car will work. It will push the car down, not lift it up. Uh, it will have good cooling and everything will be fine. So if we actually decide one day to build a, a real racing car out of the same sort of body with the manual gearbox, we can use the same body and we can be faster than the original Corvette on the track. One of the interesting features that we did is decided to, to lower the deck on the rear. Um, the reason for that is uh, really simple because the Corvette has a really too high rear end in order to, to get the air flowing down. If you have a really, really high end, you will get a lot of suction behind the car. and This will actually hold the car back. This will create a sort of drag. You will have a big drag wake behind you. So if we can get the airstream downwards and from the below, we can get it upwards, 
uh, through the diffuser and everything, then the car will actually suck to the ground, uh, have better aerodynamics, less drag, and it might even look better. When we started doing this body, we, we started, of course, like a drawing. You draw a line. But then when you actually start to build the body, then you understand it's more about shapes, it's not about lines. The shape has to be right. And the shape is right when you see it in the sunlight, that you have one point of origin for the light, and then you start seeing how it actually reflects. So in the garage, we, we cannot really see it. So we make something, we push it out, even in, <laughs> in uh, winter time, and then we actually see what we've made. If the next body is not nice, we do a next one. It has, to, it has to be right. It has to be beautiful. Beautiful is good. And awesome is even better. But beautiful is good. All right, so thank you for watching. And join us next time when we actually start making the body. See ya.